with open hearts and open minds. First United Methodist Church in Pueblo, Colorado presents Hope and Coffee with Pastor Hugo Venegas. Hi, this is Hugo Venegas. Welcome back to Hope and Coffee. It is Thursday, it is Thursday, and this week we're studying, experimenting with gratitude. We are looking at a biblical foundation that will help us to understand how important gratitude and thanksgiving and praising God is in the life of the followers of Christ or whoever in general. These are principles that we can all practice, and uh, we may not necessarily have a strong faith in God, but when we acknowledge God like the Samaritan man did, and came back and thanked him for Jesus healing his skin, uh, we open ourselves up to a greater miracle in our lives. And uh, today I want us to focus on, on uh, what is called the polarity of gratitude. And by polarity, I mean if you can see something at a, at a negative spectrum and a positive spectrum, in the negative, let us say, I am in debt. I am in debt. And this that creates anxiety. And what is the opposite side of that, the polarity? Abundance. I have lots of money. I have lots of savings. That's, that's what is called polarity. And gratitude, what gratitude does, it reduces the polarity in our experience and it brings us to a place closer to where we can allow God to enter into our lives and draw us away from the negative and more into the positive. So I'm going to illustrate biblically how we can uh, reduce that tension between the polarity in our lives and how to, how, how, to, how to go about it. I'm going to show you how to do it. But let me draw your attention to Philippians. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn to Philippians chapter um, 4. If you turn to chapter 4, and I want you to look at a, a verses 4 through 7. And it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. So Paul is helping us understand and he's helping the believers at Philippi how to deal with the polarity of life. And uh, he wants them to start, okay, he wants them to start with what we don't do. Uh, in our lives, whenever we go to church and someone is saying, how are you? We start with the bad news. Uh, what's going on? Uh, I got pain, or I got arthritis, and my car broke down. And when we start with the negative, in, in, in a weird way, we, we keep the negative energy around and then that attracts more negative things in our lives. So we have a fight with someone and then we tell all our friends about the fight and we go and we tell our co-workers about the fight. Then we go and tell our best friend about the fight. And what we're doing is generating more negative and more negative energy. And Paul shows us the way to victory, the way to victory, folks. He says, look at verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And this is not a suggestion. This is a command to the believers. It is imperative that you rejoice. So how do we deal with lack in our lives? Start with what makes you joyful. Start with giving gratitude for God for the things that rejoice, that bring joy to you. And that's why he says, the joy, you, you guys hear me every Sunday say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If we get up in the morning and all I'm like, praise God, this is going to be the best day of my life. Or we get up and we say, man, something amazingly awesome is going to happen with me. I am so thankful that I got up. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. So thankful Costa Rican coffee is in the house. When we start with joy, we reproduce more joy in our lives. We attract more joy in our lives. And that's why the Apostle Paul is saying, if you have anxiety in your life, 
If you have, if you have no peace, he's saying, go back to joy, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So this is what we're going to do. I want you to take your notebooks out. I want you to take your pens out. Hopefully you have colored pens because I use colored pens. Why? Because they bring me joy. They bring me joy. So I have a lot of colored pens. Now, so I want you to, on your notebook, I, I want you to figure out here and I want you on one side to create a joy list. And the other side, I need you to create an anxiety list. All right. So on the joy list, write down the things that bring you joy. So I have three. I'm just giving you three as an example. Time and meditation. Man, it's the first thing I do in the morning when I get up. I just meditate. Time with the Lord. And that gives me a lot of joy. Study time. I love to study. Because I was trained at Denver Seminary by Haddon Robinson, who was known in the 20th century as one of the best uh, preachers and one of the best teachers of preachers. And he always said to us as students, it is a sin to bore people with the word of God. And he says, study, study. <laughs> so he inculcated that in my life. And that's why I, I tell you, folks, you know me. Those of you here at the First United Methodist Church, you know me. I, I have to lock myself up to study so that I'm sure that I am, I, am, I am understanding God's word and I am delivering it to the best of my ability. And that brings me joy. Then I have talking to relatives. When I talk to my relatives, I get happy. When I do WhatsApp with my nieces, when I give a shout out to my sister, when I uh, inst in instant message my friends, uh, you know, that, that just brings me a lot of joy. So what are the things that bring you joy? And then thank you. So I'm going to say thank you, God, for the times that you allow me to have meditations in the morning. Thank you, God, that you allow me to be at a, at a church where I can study. I can lock myself up and study your word. I thank you for that. And I thank you for all the wonderful times that I have talking to my relatives and my family with the technology that we have on my cell phone. Then at the right now, I want you to create a list of the things that bring you anxiety. And I'm, I'm going to give you three. If violence brings me a lot of anxiety, what's going on in America, what's going on in Nigeria, in parts of uh, different parts of the world. Economic hardships bring me uh, a, a lot of anxiety. Uh, we are at a place at our church where giving all, all across denominations have gone down. And uh, that brings a lot of anxiety because we have to do the work of God. Uh, the pandemic is not going to stop the word of God. We need to preach. We need to serve. We need to feed the poor. We need to keep giving because that's why we're here for. You know, we're going to have a party time in heaven. So what we do is take our money and invest it into the kingdom of God. So we need to keep giving, keep tithing, keep offering to the Lord so that the work of the kingdom continue. And then division. Man, our country is divided. People, if friends don't talk to each other. There are relatives that have unfriended each other on Facebook. And uh, why? Because this brings anxiety. So what do I do with the things that bring me anxiety? That's why Paul says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request before God. So you see what he's saying? When we pray, we are to pray our petitions with thanksgiving. What does that mean? That if we say, man, the world is going to hell. Everything is falling down. I can't stand this world. What are we doing? We're attracting negativity into our lives and into our culture, into the church. But thanksgiving. So when you have something that brings anxiety, pray the opposite. So violence. I said, God. I want you to bring peace to America. I want you to bring love back to America. And I thank you, Lord, that we have more people that are already on the bandwagon of love. And we have more people that are holding on to the flag of peace and not the weapons of destruction. And, and thank you that there will be more peace in America. Economic hardships. Father, thank you for what we have. Thank you for those who have jobs. And I pray for abundance. I pray for breakthroughs. Thank you for the breakthroughs. 
Thank you for your stimulus check. We need a stimulus check from heaven. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Division. God, thank you that we are one people. We are one nation under God, indivisible. Thank you for the United States of America. For the United States of America, one nation under God. Thank you that we're under you. And that's how we go from our anxiety. We pray in the positive and we thank God for the positive reality that we want. This is Hugo Venegas from the First United Methodist Church in Pueblo, Colorado. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed our inspirational Bible study, like or subscribe below. Join us for worship online or in person. You can visit us at firstumcpueblo.org or you can come by at 310 West 11th Street, Pueblo, Colorado, 81003. Give us a call, 719-544-1917, and join us again tomorrow for another inspirational Bible study. We'll see you soon.